the, uh, the next program, which is very different from the uh, Committee for Research and Exploration, is the Expeditions Council. If it's science, it's reviewed and we make sure it's good quality science, but the, the deciders on these grants are the media experts at National Geographic. So you get a group of a dozen or so around the table and they look at these projects and if the magazine and TV like it, if there's really strong interest in the pro project, whatever it is, and this could be like Mike Fay's mega transect or a really interesting um, exploration of, let's say, yike, a lichen on the, on the walls of Yosemite, um, something that's exciting, dramatic, Expeditions Council is uh, the place to go. This was started over 10 years ago by Rebecca Martin, who you'll hear from um, just after me. But a great program that allows our media folks to get their, um, their hands in the mix. And uh, this is a, a million to a million and a half a year given in slightly larger amounts to our uh, leading explorers and exciting individuals. Conservation Trust, I started, um, oh, it was probably about uh, eight years ago now. Um, to fill the gap for conservation projects. doesn't have to be science, isn't necessarily media interesting, but it's a really key way to move the ball ahead on conservation programs. And then, um, for your interest, uh, the Young Explorers Grant actually applies to all three of these grant programs. So you can apply as a Young Explorer for up to $5,000 within the Com Committee for Research and Exploration, the Expeditions Council, or the Conservation Trust. And uh, those three programs entertain at each of their meetings um, Young Explorer Grants. So it's, uh, it's uh, important for you to imagine where you might best fit into this. And you can read more about this online, and we'll talk more about it as the day progresses. Um, a final and newest uh, program, which you should know about, um, this is open to all comers. You can be 15 years old if you uh, have a really good idea. The Wake Grants is a risky um, uh, you know, it's a high-risk grant program. New, it's science-oriented, so it has to be a scientific project, but it's something that's way out there that nobody would, in, perhaps in their right mind, fund because it's too risky, but we do it because that's part of our identity. And so if you have a program, this is up to $15,000, and if you have a program that's a good research program, make sure you can deliver. If you can't deliver, you're, you're wasting everybody's time, but if you have the background and you have the... Um, the knowledge and the great idea of the weight grants is a place that you can also consider to go. And that's new as of uh, three years ago, and it um, gives away about oh, 700000 uh, a year, as I said, in a $15,000 um, increment. So that's, that's the panoply of grant programs. There are others, but these are the ones that I oversee and the most applicable to, uh, to this, this audience. Now, what do we do with this? Well, you know, National Geographic in some ways is a hero factory. I don't mean that lightly. I mean, what happens is these people matriculate, and if they've received a number of grants, they end up getting promoted more and more, and ultimately, these people are the leaders in various fields. And, and we want to show you our explorers and residents, which is kind of the epitome of our uh, explorers. Um, many of them were started with uh, National Geographic grants. You might know Bob Ballard discovered the Titanic. Wade Davis, uh, astounding author, looking at um, ethnobotany. Uh, Jared Diamond, I mentioned, Sylvia Earle, also known as her deepness. She's an uh, amazing ocean conservation leader. Uh, recently started a program called Mission Blue, which we support. Zahi Hawass, who's the uh, head of antiquities for Egypt and is a major leader in um, Egyptian ar uh, archaeology. Derek and Beverly Joubert are behind a Big Cats initiative now, and they're filmmakers, but also conservationists active in Botswana. And, and Africa in general taking on the challenge of the conservation of um, big cats. Um, the Leakies, actually the Leakies have received their, as a family, five individuals have received 116 grants from us, $2.2 million. That goes back all, all 50 years. And we still support um, Meve and her daughter Louise and their work in uh, Lake Turkana. Johan Reinhardt discovered the ice mummy, Paul Serino, uh, leading paleontologist Spencer Wells, who has a project called Genographic. Have any of you had your DNA tested with Genographic? <laughs> My gosh, it's, uh, for $100 you can contribute to one of the best uh, genealogical studies on the planet. Just go to our website. And, uh, <laughs> but you get to do a cheek swab and you find out where your Y, y chromosome has been, um, or where it came from really or your mitochondrial DNA. It's a really cool way to look at your own personal genealogy. Anyway, Spencer is a major uh, proponent of understanding human history through the lens of, gene, uh, of genetics. And 
That's just the beginning, because we also have a fellows program. We look into the disappearance of languages with Greg Anderson. Um, Elizabeth Lindsay is very interested in Polynesian navigation and has a major um, TV series that's coming out. Enrique Sala has a new uh, marine conservation initiative called I Am the Ocean. He works with Sylvia Earle, and we just launched this last week, so look on the web for I Am the Ocean. You'll see that we're, we're taking marine conservation messaging to a very high step with PSAs and a global outreach initiative to try to get people thinking about our ocean issues. Um, in our Explorers program, we also have, and this is the lower tier in this uh, process that I was telling you about, but very important now, we have emerging explorers, which are young, young people who are beginning to make a difference. We shine a light on them. Jerry Glover uh, is all about soil structure and, and agroecology, um, and he, he's looking at biodiversity and its role on growing uh, effective crops. He stood on the stage, and he had to stand up on a garbage can to hold a uh, tall grass prairie um, specimen because the roots were 12 feet long, and he had a dried sample, and there was the tufts up here, and then the, the roots just the structure of uh, a well-developed and, and ancient uh, prairie <coughs> ecosystem is something that he wants people to focus on as we're into monoculture cultures of late. Um, Borlet Tseg Minjin is uh, trying to expand um, the uh, uh, Mongolian paleontology community. It's, uh, Gobi Desert is one of the hot spots, but there are very few people going there, so if you, any of you are budding paleontologists, we can hook you up with with her, and um, Jose Orteaga, I can tell you, just uh, last week discovered a major new hawksbill uh, um, breeding colony in, in Nicaragua, which we probably won't hear about for another year because it's being, not with my help, kept under wraps. Um, anyway, he's a major uh, uh, turtle conservationist. Um, you can go and learn about the 9,500 if you have some time on uh, our Google served, uh, Google Maps served um, uh, site, just go to National Geographic Grants and you can click in, and, uh, and I think you, the idea is to ultimately have it be the portal for all of our grantees, including you all. Right now, you can get information about individual grants, but we don't have a two-way street yet or social networking, and that's on the calendar. Uh, it should be coming forward soon, and maybe one of you as a grantee will become one of those golden rectangles, so let's look forward to that. Um, what happens once you get a grant from National Geographic is you become part of the geographic engine, media engine, and if your work is exciting, it ends up going out to very large audiences. We reach 350 million a month, and we can tell stories in a variety of ways. The scientists typically tell their stories through scientific publications, so you get these examples of work on dinosaur um, lineage uh, showing up in nature or the amazing uh, changes that are occurring in climate uh, affected in, in the glacial systems. Outbreaks of glacial lakes is something we're big into now. Um, coconut palms and the uh, interaction with seabirds, another topic that came up in this case in PNAS. But beyond the scientific publications, and there are many, and they're really quite robust and they give us an opportunity to hook into these stories with a large audience. We also have our own media, as you know. We can tell a story in 20 different ways. Um, you know, we have our National Geographic News Online that's a daily feed, and it's really well visited, and AP picks up a lot of stories, so, um, you know, we have examples of uh, our Conservation Trust, a young explorer grantee, uh, Leah Sagatolova, uh, who got featured in, in our daily news feed. Roland Fletcher uh, was part of our magazine's uh, uh, story, um, uh, a cover story. And he does work on disappearance of, uh, of cultures, the collapse of Angkor. He's trying to relate to the collapse of the Maya. He looks at water structure and, uh, and the um, cultivation that occurred with water in Angkor and how that might have been affected through climate change and other insults in, in Angkor in, uh, um, centuries ago. Kenny, uh, we've already talked about uh, Kenny a little bit, and you'll get to hear a lot more from him tonight, but um, they um, had a wonderful um, Nova show as well as a cover story on the magazine. So this is an example of the kind of thing we can really run with. And it was a fantastic combination of uh, exploration, science, and, um, and really, um, you know, wild adventure that makes National Geographic a kind of a go-to place for, um, for storytelling as well as important information. Uh, before turning the um, podium to Rebecca, I wanted to give you a glimpse of the biggest thing that's happening and it will, um, it, it, it's called our Great Migrations Cross-Platform. 
and if you look around the, um, the screen here, you notice that this, um, this event, this global event, is going to be a seven-part high-def um, knock-your-socks-off um, TV series, but also tied to it is a, a range of other activities from magazines, books, merchandise, education programs. We have games. Uh, we have a variety of events. And we also hook into uh, conservation organizations who are trying to safeguard migratory corridors. This is a, where National Geographic is going, basically, is turning this huge media engine tied with our grantees. And there are several grantees in this series, and, series, and all the information is based on uh, work that scientists do around the world. This is what we can do as, an, as a very, I think, important nonprofit on, on this planet that has combined great stories and information with a huge megaphone to try to make a difference. National Geographic, in case you haven't heard, has repositioned its vision and we're now saying besides the increase in diffusion of geographic knowledge, which was our 1888 um, mission, we've added to that that we want to inspire people to care about the planet. And this is a good example of what we're doing. It's going to be on the, on, um, the air November 7th. I think we're out with that date now. So make a note, uh, and uh, besides four one-hour uh, specials, there's a music video, there's a behind-the-scenes video, there's also a science of migration. So those seven hours are going to be really worthwhile watching. And in fact, I'm going to show you a clip with the help of Parnell in the back um, so you can get a sense of what this is about. Pretty cool, huh? So that shot with the phantom camera, it's a thousand frames a second high def. It really opens up the world like you can't believe. You, you're really going to love that. Um, so I was going to turn the podium over. You know, one thing I w need to mention is that you guys can't be shy at this event, all right? The door is open. Seriously, this is unusual. This is, you know, this, we don't normally peddle our grant making. This is only the sixth place we've come. Um, Take advantage of it. You know, we're all here. We know how the system works. We have a lot of experience. You know, there are people here who are kind of world class. I didn't mention Pete Athens, who's in the audience. Pete, where's, raise your hand. Uh, you know, Pete's a, uh, you know, a serious, serious climber, North Face athlete, you know, seven times summited Everest, and, uh, you know, one of the leaders in the world in, in um, climbing and also taking climbing to a new level beyond the sport, um, supporting. Uh, Nonprofits taking care of eye, eye cataract um, uh, illnesses in the in Nepal and and looking after communities that he's relied on for his climbing. So, you know, people like that are here. Kenny, uh, the young uh, explorers, grantees, you're going to hear from. You've got to take time, corner us, be a little aggressive, you know, and uh, you know, get your elevator pitch down so you know just basically what you want to do, or at least the questions about where you can go, and go with it because that's what it's all about, and we're here uh, because we want you to, uh, to approach us, okay? Now, one of the people at Geographic who is probably the best in shepherding any individual who wants to make a difference through the society is Rebecca Morton. And Rebecca started the Expeditions Council over 10 years ago. She also worked with me. I spent a couple of years trying to get this program funded, and ultimately, when we got the money, she was the one who, who essentially built it out with Angie Sanders and some others here. Um, so she is a mover and shaker within uh, the society and, can, and is really a great escort, if you will, to uh, the challenges that we put in front of you. So um, I think you'll enjoy hearing what she has to say more about the program, and um, please welcome Rebecca. Rebecca. 